After first verifying that the system in which the valve is installed has been isolated, drained, and tagged out following facility procedures, the workman then begins the first step involved in repacking the valve, which is loosening and removing the nuts which hold the gland follower in place. Once both of these nuts have been removed, the gland follower can then be drawn back on the valve stem. Now, as is the case with most valves, the gland follower cannot be removed from the valve without disassembling the yoke which supports the valve hand wheel. But there's no need to remove it from the valve. It can be slid back on the valve stem, exposing the stuffing box. After this has been done, the workman is then ready to remove the old packing from the stuffing box. To do this, he makes use of a commercial packing removal tool, which looks very much like a big flexible corkscrew. It's threaded in to each ring of packing, and then the packing is drawn out of the stuffing box and set aside. Now, these steps are repeated until all packing has been removed. The tool is inserted in the stuffing box and threaded into the ring of packing and then used to withdraw the packing from the stuffing box. Now, I should point out that this packing is coming out pretty easy. At times, you'll find packing very difficult to remove, and a variety of tools may be needed. At times, I have made special tools that look sort of like bent ice picks or something like that in order to assist in removing packing. But the important thing to remember is to use care in the selection and use of the tools such that you do not scratch either the shaft or the stuffing box surfaces because if they become scratched or scarred, this will contribute to leakage, even though new packing is installed. So the workman repeats these steps until all packing is removed from the stuffing box, and he sets the rings of packing aside as they are removed. This way, he can keep track of the number of rings of packing that are removed from the valve. And this information is important, because obviously he has to make plans as to how much packing he's going to install in the valve once all the old packing has been taken out. So as I said, these steps are repeated until all packing has been removed. The packing tool is inserted into the stuffing box, using care not to scratch the stem or the stuffing box itself. The tool is threaded into the rings of packing, and then using the tool, the packing is drawn out and set aside. Now, after all the packing has been removed, the workman makes notes as to the number of rings of packing which were removed because, as I said, he needs this information to plan how many rings of packing need to be reinstalled in the valve. Now, with all the packing removed, the workman then cleans out the stuffing box. Now, there's a number of ways this can be done. In this case, he simply uses a small piece of rag wrapped around the end of his packing removal tool. The reason for doing this is to remove any bits and pieces of packing which may remain in the stuffing box, and also to wipe off the surface of the stuffing box and the surface of the stem to allow him to inspect them. So he wipes out the stuffing box and wipes off the stem, and then performs an inspection to determine the condition of these two items. Now, in most cases, you'll need a small inspection mirror in order to see into the stuffing box but it's important that this inspection be performed. What he's looking for is any evidence of erosion, grooving, or gouging on these components. Because if there are grooves, either on the stem or on the walls of the stuffing box, then this valve will continue to leak, even though new packing is installed. So if he found excessive grooving, rather than repacking the valve, he would have to initiate action to have these parts repaired or replaced. In this case, the inspection showed that the stuffing box and stem were in good condition. So the next step for him to perform was some measurements to determine the size packing that he needed to install in the valve. So the first measurement he performs is to determine the inside diameter of the stuffing box. So he inserts a pair of dividers into the stuffing box, adjusts them, and then measures them to determine the ID of the stuffing box. After checking this dimension, again, he writes it down, of course, and then will perform another measurement. The other important measurement is the outside diameter of the valve stem. 
And I think you see what we're getting at here. With these two dimensions, he can then calculate the gap between the valve stem and the stuffing box, and this will tell him the size packing that he needs. So the workman makes use of a vernier calipers and measures the outside diameter of the valve stem. After taking this measurement, like before, he double checks it and then writes it down on the data sheet that he's using for this job. And at this point, he performs a calculation. He must subtract the two measurements that he has just taken and divide the result of that subtraction by two. This gives him the gap around the valve stem, between the stem and the stuffing box of the valve being worked on. And this dimension is the size packing that he needs to use. So after performing the calculation, and of course putting his measuring instruments away to prevent damage, he is then ready to go down to the storeroom and obtain some new packing to be installed in the valve. Well, how does he know what type of packing to get? Now, we've seen some steps involved in determining what size packing he needed and how much by measuring and counting the number of rings removed. But how does he know what type to get? We said there was a variety of types of packing available. Well, in several different ways. He can check just by looking at the packing he removed. And with experience, he, you can usually tell what type of packing it was, even though it is worn. He may go to a chart, such as the one in the student workbook, which describes different types of packing for different applications. He may have information from the valve manufacturer as to what type of packing they recommend. And many facilities keep records as to what type of packing should be installed in each valve in the facility. And this is based on experience over a long term, where they determine which packing works best in each application. So using one or more of these methods, you can determine what type of packing is needed for any particular valve being repacked. Well, I think that brings us up to a pretty good break point. We've seen the steps involved in removing old packing, cleaning, measuring steps, and so forth. So while our workman obtains the new packing for this particular valve, why don't we take a short break and give you a chance to review what we've been talking about with your instructor. Well, at the end of the last segment, our workman had removed all the old packing from the valve he was working on, had performed measurements and so forth to determine the size packing he needed and we said he'd left to obtain some new packing. Well, he's now obtained that packing. He's on his way back to the valve. So let's catch up with him and see what he does next. Now, in this example, the packing used in the valve is supplied in bulk form. So the first job the workman will perform is to cut this packing into lengths of the appropriate size in order to install it. Now, if you'll recall, during packing removal, the workman noted the number of rings of packing which were originally installed in the valve. To double check the number of rings he will need to reinstall, he measures the depth of the stuffing box by inserting a small ruler. He then divides the stuffing box depth by the size of the packing. And of course, the result of this calculation is the number of rings he needs to install, which in most cases will be the same number he removed. After doing this, he is then ready to begin cutting packing into lengths of the appropriate size in order to form the rings that he will place in the stuffing box. Now, there's a number of ways that this can be accomplished, but it's extremely important that it be done carefully and properly. In this case, the way the workman chose to do it is to wrap packing around the stem of the valve in order to establish the proper length. He then begins a cut at the same angle as the cut end on the packing. However, he does not cut all the way through the packing. If he did that, he might scratch the stem, which would result in excessive leak off. Instead, he starts the cut while the packing is on the stem in order to establish the proper angle, and then moves the packing to his work table and completes the cut at the angle already established. After cutting one ring of packing, he then repeats the same steps for each ring. He wraps the packing around the valve stem and pulls it tight in order to establish the proper length for the ring. He then begins the cut, which establishes the angle and the same angle as the cut end of the packing. Then after beginning the cut, 
He removes the packing from the stem to avoid the possibility of scratching the stem and completes the cutting while the packing is on his work table. Now let me emphasize and illustrate for you the importance of cutting packing at the proper angle. With a ring of packing installed in the stuffing box, what we're after here is for the two ends of the ring to butt tightly together so there's minimal leakage at this point. However, if the packing is cut improperly, a V-shaped or notch-shaped joint can result. This will, of course, result in excessive leak-off, not necessarily immediately. If several rings are installed, it may seal initially, but the packing will leak prematurely if the joints are of this type. So the workman continues to repeat the steps we have just seen until the necessary number of rings of packing have been cut, which in this case is a total of four rings. After he has cut all four rings, he then begins to install them in the stuffing box. He takes the first ring, places it around the valve stem, carefully assures that the two ends do in fact join flatly together. He then pushes the ring into the stuffing box. He then makes use of a specially fabricated wooden bushing in order to firmly seat the ring into the stuffing box. Now this is an extremely important step. Each ring should be seated into the stuffing box individually before the next ring is installed. This assures that the ring is fully inserted and that it is squarely inserted into the stuffing box. After doing this, he removes the split bushing and then repeats the same steps with the next ring of packing. He takes the ring and places it around the valve stem, butts the two ends together, and then pushes it into the stuffing box. Now you'll notice that this ring goes in with its joint staggered 90 degrees from the joint on the first ring. Now you'll find a rule in your student workbook which describes the staggering of packing joints. And the way they should be staggered varies with the number of rings of packing installed. In this case, a total of four rings would be installed, and the rule called for installing them with their joints staggered 90 degrees. So the workman then repeats the same steps for the third ring of packing. And as before, the joint is staggered 90 degrees from the previous ring. He places it around the stem, verifies that the ends are joining as they should, inserts it in the stuffing box, and then seats it in the stuffing box using the wooden bushing. Now, wooden bushing isn't always required. And in fact, on some valves, it may not be possible to use one because of tight space requirements. But it is important that each ring of packing be firmly seated in the stuffing box by the use of a wooden bushing or some other blunt object. You should never use such things as screwdrivers, ice picks, or anything like that to seat packing rings, because these pointed objects will, of course, cause damage to the packing. The fourth ring of packing is installed in the stuffing box, as were the first three, carefully aligning the joint and staggering it 90 degrees. Then after this fourth ring has been seated, the gland follower is drawn up over it, placed over the studs which hold the gland follower in place, and then once it's in position, the nuts and washers can be installed on the studs. Now once both nuts and washers have been installed, the workman is then ready to adjust the packing. What's required here is an even tightening of the two nuts which hold the gland follower in place. And by that I mean each nut needs to be drawn up the same amount to ensure that the follower is drawn straight into the stuffing box to apply an even pressure all the way around the packing. Now with experience, you will get a feel for how tight you should make these adjustments. And that's about the only way you can do it, with experience and feel. The goal is to snug up the packing at this time, but not to complete the final adjustment. Final packing adjustment is not performed until the system in which the valve is installed has been placed into normal operation. So the next step performed then is to remove the tags which were hung for workman's protection and to place the system in its normal operating status. Then, while an operator actually operates the valve opened and closed, the workman completes a final packing adjustment, tightening the packing to the point where minimal leakage occurs and yet the valve is still operating.